Hey, what's up guys? Everything Apple Pro, turning everything Samsung Pro here. And I just gotta say, I did not expect to make this video. I did not expect to wake up today and tell you that I'm switching to Android because I think I might like it. Um, seriously, okay. So let me just explain this. I'm actually gonna be switching to the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus and the logic behind that, I think, is we were, we've been using these phones with Keaton. We actually, we're doing this together. We're both using a Galaxy for a week, at least. Um, we're just setting these phones up, using them, and I, I just couldn't help but admire the engineering that went into just the processes for, for the color, for the, the body, how thin and light it is. And then I started using it, like, okay, they, they improved this, they improved this. It's been a while since I last used an Android phone. Like, believe it or not, I used to use Android before Apple. Like, l let me show you a little tiny history lesson here about me. So got a bunch of phones here. This is my first phone right here, the LG NV2. It was running some crappy LG software, that's whatever, but you know, I did use Android before. This was my first probably functional Android phone, the Motorola Droid here. These things were awesome, seriously, for someone that likes to fidget. Now I'm doing it with AirPods cases. This used to be the same thing back in the day. Then I was, oh, then I upgraded to this guy right here. So this was at the time, like a crazy improvement, the Galaxy Nexus made by Samsung. So I do have some Samsung expertise here from the way back in the day, but this phone was amazing. Curved display, it was just like the future at the time when phones were 2D, very low resolution. I loved it. Then came the HTC Droid. So this thing was like bright red. I remember the inside in particular, you'd open the casing and you'd be able to open the casing on a phone, which is crazy compared to iPhones, I'm saying. And inside is all red. This phone was something, something, something for sure. I used it for probably a year. And this was the last Android phone that I used. So just so you know where I'm coming from here. I've used Android in the past. I like Android, but they lost me somewhere. The iPhone took over. I've been with them for like seven years probably since. Oh my gosh. So imagine me right now. I'm switching my entire life which I built up for the iPhone to the Samsung uh, it's gonna be quite a process but today I wanted to talk to you about why I use iPhone you know being such a for technology for the latest innovation why I stick with iPhone we're gonna break that down today and we're gonna talk about what I like about this phone kind of just everything let's go do that um, just for me personally this is more of a push to to force myself to use Android to understand the platform and in a way I could use this to see how Apple could improve their iPhone like all around it's it's a plus plus here I'll be I'll be testing out the competition seeing what they're doing right and at the same time giving Apple some feedback with the iPhone once I get back from this journey and I think using it a week should be good but honestly, I'm afraid I'll stay. I'm honestly afraid I'm gonna stay. There are so many things that keep me on team iPhone, but it seems like the S10 has mitigated most of those issues. So let's get into detail. Let's go back inside and pretty cool day today. It's snowing, so I'm gonna have fun with this one. It's a good day to switch to Android, I guess. <laughs> perfect timing to do this. I wonder why I'm single. And then articles come out like this saying, basically there's a reason. 70% of singles would rather prefer other people that use iPhones instead of Samsung. So honestly, like there is a stigma here. When someone pulls out a Samsung nowadays in the younger crowd, everyone's like, uh, what is that? Like you're the weird one, the odd one out. But really, if it's truly a better technology, that should be self apparent. I'll learn that and I will stick to this phone if it ends up being the one for me. There are so many things I like about it already just a day in of usage like the instant unlock being able to remove animations the control center being able to actually turn the toggles off instead of temporary solutions being able to jump into settings real quick gesture controls just all around it's not so bad and i'm learning that slowly okay let's go definitely taking a while to get used to but it's really fast that's what i've noticed like rapid fast so you can jump in, out. It's not the same, it's not as intuitive. And you really quickly understand that Apple has a very smooth scrolling mechanism that they, they fine tuned over many generations of iOS. And this right away, I could just tell I'm not gonna agree with the scrolling behavior on Galaxies at all. Something I took for granted that I never really thought I would, I would specifically ask for this feature on a phone, but the scrolling behavior needs to improve. As long as, as, long as the Tesla stuff gets taken care of, access to my house, because right away I gotta switch over everything. Like it's a, it's a huge lifestyle change. Like I have to switch over all my smart locks, my Tesla key, my home pods don't work anymore. You understand why it's so hard to go to Android, but I'm forcing myself because it's hard. I'm forcing myself to do that. So hopefully a force into this will open my mind up to new things. Like there's probably so much I'm missing out on Android. And if you guys have any of your expert tips, leave them below. I'm curious to know what I've been missing out on for the last seven years on Android. Yeah, look at that, way faster. And that will compound over time, I believe. 
so less animations just jumping into basic things like uh, settings even no animations how cool is that saves you so much time what's up chumps you guys withering away at those videos yeah <sighs> dude I, I couldn't get into my house because my phone isn't hooked up like automatically bad downside to switching <laughs> That's a joke, by the way. All right, so we're gonna do a little history lesson here. I just want you to understand where I'm coming from. Like, I've never been opposed to Android. A lot of people think I, I hate Android and that's simply not true at all. So yeah, I've got the LG NV. I use this thing briefly, never on service. Like these phones, all up until here, it was just like a hobby thing back in the day. The alternative to iPhones and it was so cool, but even to this day, you know, application support is pretty limited. Like going to Android, one thing I'm gonna miss is notes. And that's something immediately I noticed is Bear doesn't exist. The notes synchronizing with your Mac, with everything, I'm gonna have to get one note or something. So there's all these alternatives I gotta go into. And simply the reason I wouldn't switch before is because it's, it's very annoying having to find those and settling into a new life on Android but I have to do it. So I was thinking about this 10 years ago, my 14 year old self, what would he say if I just presented this at a little time portal to myself and I could take a look at this device? Like this to me was cutting edge. This is the Nokia N810 from, you know, what, 10 years ago, this thing was so ridiculously ahead of its time. It had an interface and if it would turn on, I'd show you. But this is what basically got me into obsessing over tech, obsessing over those little details and features. The N810 series, oh my goodness, this phone was something else. It even had a little camera, but only a front one. And it was garbage. Used to be able to run Java and emulators and games and like, it was the most exciting thing figuring that out 10 years ago. Here I am in a modern setting. So again, I'm, I'm objectively looking at this and, and it just, it's just good design all around. It's very high tech, cutting edge design. I love what they're doing up here. Like the top portion of the phone is, is in the future. What they've got with the speaker grill, the display, no notch, just no notch, nothing obscuring your vision. That to me is a very big appealing factor of this phone. On the bottom here, this is where I believe the iPhone's got the, the cutting edge factor. The S10 is, is thick. I, I really dislike the bezel here, but I'll live with it, you know, whatever. You know, the, the headphone jack to me has never mattered. It's cool that it's there, that they're still including it, but I could care less. I haven't used that thing in years and I don't understand why people still defend that so much. It's, it's gonna go either way, just get ready for it. Also something to appreciate, and this wraps in with battery life, is that I can live with a phone just like this, without this. Look at, look at what my life has turned into. I'm using an iPhone XS Max with this huge battery case because I literally cannot get through a full day of battery life on my Max, personally, with my usage. So just so you know, I'm going to this super sleek device. I don't need a battery case. The battery inside is huge and it's this thin. That to me is very appealing too. And that also ties in with one-handed usage. So one-handed usage, I believe on this phone, the iPhone still has that down with the gestures. This one is really hard to, to begin using. Like I very much dislike the gesture system. I wish they could get it more like the iPhone, but you can switch between apps kind of quickly. It's just not very efficient. I think they could definitely work on the polish. Like that's the biggest thing that I'll miss about the iPhone is the polish right away. Just using it. It's so smooth. This is very technical. Like whoever was making this is, is very detail oriented, technical, not so much about the fluidity, the, the feeling that your phone gives you. And I think that's something they could work on. And one big thing for me is animations on the iPhone for the longest time. My biggest issue is how long it takes to go through the drawn out animations, how everything is so slow. On the S10, it's pretty much instant. And I enabled a further setting where, you know, basically there's no animation at all. So I think over time that will compound and give you not only time savings, but just efficiency in what you do. One big thing I'll miss about the iPhone though is 3D touch. I cannot live without it. My biggest thing is in the trackpad area, 3D touching. Also the haptic feedback, the, the taptic engine in this is unreal. And just using this thing roughly, it's just a basic vibration motor. They could have definitely improved that. And that's something Apple got down is again, how your iPhone makes you feel how it makes your hand feel when it responds to a gesture. The Galaxy is way too robotic. It's just, it's just like a robot, but I love it. You know, I'll try it, cool. Okay, next big one for me is the software. Like, finally it feels like I'm running a jailbreak on a phone at all times, but it's supported features like picture in picture, picture in picture for navigation, I believe. Just these little things that make life so much easier. Uh, the swipe shortcut, I think I'm, I'll definitely take advantage of this one, so I'll set that up eventually. But just those software features that are so nice to have, being able to visit 
the, the settings page of the device from the control center over here. Very nice all around, quick settings page. Optimizations that Apple should have made that save you time, and that means so much to me. I do like the idea of having a number O keyboard on top of yours. That's something I have to ask Apple for, but Samsung's had it for years. On the iPhone, also something to appreciate is that it comes with less bloatware. Apple does preload more apps now than they did maybe a few years ago, but in comparison to the S10, which still comes with a considerable amount of garbage, just stuff I will never use, you know, you gotta hand it to Apple, they keep things simple. Oh my gosh, and this is such a big one for me. Uh, the back swipe, like using Instagram completely changes your experience now. You no longer have that, the ability to swipe back. Going from a post to try and go back, it's such an impulsive thing for me and it's so annoying that it doesn't work. I just wish you could enable that with a gesture. If you can, let me know, but oh, I will forever miss the back swipe, it's just, the, one of those things that's just ingrained in me and I can't, it's so hard to leave. Of course, you gotta appreciate that you now have wireless power share. I could power any of my devices on the go just from this phone without having an external battery. The included dark mode, something we don't have to wait anymore. It's literally a meme at this point how long Apple's taking to add this stuff. I like the idea of a universal connector, USB-C now just for my MacBook, for this. Literally, I'm using an Android phone with my MacBook and it feels more natural than an iPhone with a MacBook. That says a lot, Apple. The cable situation on Apple's end, figure that crap out. It is annoying, it's frustrating, it's, it's something we shouldn't have to be dealing with in 2019, honestly. Of course, the fast charge feature, I love that I'm gonna be able to set this and leave, and it'll be charged within minutes on a greater level than Apple's ever would. Okay, so something that I noticed real quick up here, this is basically color wear in the uh, control center, whatever, the notification center on Android. Like, you basically get that, shuffling of album artwork, it looks so cool. That's what I've been wanting on iOS for the longest time and it's implemented up here, just very beautiful all around. Oh, and of course the fingerprint sensor, like that's very important to me. As a kid, I used to be obsessed with those old iPhone 2G, 3G apps that would promise a built-in fingerprint sensing on the screen and now 10 years later, it's a reality, it's real. It's not a pipe dream anymore, it's not this futuristic concept, it's in our everyday pocket and that is so hard to believe. Like. Really, when you think about it. I think I'm gonna like this a lot more than Face ID. Like Face ID for me has been kind of annoying lately. I've been wearing a lot of hats, it's cold outside, and Face ID fails very often for me personally with my beard and, and, ch and changing everything all the time. So having this convenience just right here, if I, can, if I can get the spot down, I keep missing it. The software needs to have a control there always, like period, so I know where to click, but I'm sure it'll become impulsive. Of course, I'm gonna miss iOS updates. The number one thing that iOS has over Android for me is constant support, refresh, things, you wait for an eternity, you'll basically never get updated no matter what they promise, Android still to this day has the worst update system. For most vendors, OnePlus got that on lockdown though. Honestly, I think I'll miss my Apple Watch a lot. I ordered the entire like shebang. If I'm gonna go into the Samsung interface, I'm gonna use the Galaxy Buds, I'm gonna use the watch, the charger, the TV, I even bought a new one for that. Just going full in to see just truly how much it's changed. And I think I'm gonna like it a lot. That's the scary part. I think one of the contributing factors why I've never done this is I literally think I'm gonna like it too much and I'm not gonna wanna go back. And I don't even think this needs to be said. This app is just gonna make my life miserable right now, having to explain to every single person why my messages are showing up green. <laughs> oh, that's the worst, but I think, I'll, I think I'll manage. Honestly, even continuity, the connection between your phone and computer, because I use a Mac, is gonna be very fragmented now. That's gonna be annoying, very annoying to deal with. And then the other stuff like Apollo, like the, the application you take for granted, the perfect Reddit clients, the closest thing I think is Boost on Android, but even so, it doesn't have the polish that Apollo does. Again, it all comes down to polish, how smooth everything feels on the iPhone, so yeah guys, I just wanna let you know what I'm doing, where I'm coming from. Like, I've been into tech in, in surveying the landscape the longest time, and I think it's time to reevaluate Android with the Samsung Galaxy S10. As a challenge to myself, I'll be using this thing for a minimum of a week, and uh, yeah, I'll keep you updated on that journey. So thanks for watching guys, stay tuned, and don't be afraid to question things. Always be real with yourself why you're doing something. Don't just do it aimlessly because everyone is, but peace.